Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or if you are new because I do have a bunch of new subscribers, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I am going to talk about six things that I have learned in trauma therapy that have been really helpful for me and not just things that like you hear and you let go, but things that have really been able to be applied to my life when I come across triggers or tough situations and I want to share those with you to help somebody who is also going through, you know, tough times in life. But <clears throat> before I go into that, I want to just, again, thank you guys. I have received the kindest, most heartwarming comments in the past few months and especially in the past few weeks as I've kind of like come back onto social media and to filming videos again. And it's been it's helped my heart and my soul in a way that you guys will never understand. Like people sending me messages just saying like, you don't have to have any specific thing that you come on and talk about on YouTube. Like you are so multifaceted. You could talk about whatever you want to talk about. Just know that I'm listening. You have helped me. And at the end of the day, like I've said many, many, many times, that is what I want for this channel. I just want to help other people no matter how I'm helping. That's all I want at the end of the day. This is the first time in my life that I really struggled with just really having a difficult time dealing with stuff. At times there was so much chaos in my head that I wasn't able to properly express what I was feeling or understand it. And that's what these key things have helped me to deal with. So I want to share those with you. The very first exercise that seems kind of obvious, but it wasn't so obvious to me because I'm somebody that works through problems on my own, but it is to check in daily. Now, this is going to be very dependent on who, what you are in therapy for. So if you are in marriage or couples counseling, you would check in with your spouse. If you are in independent counseling, you would check in with your support system, either your husband or your wife or your mother, whoever is that support for you. And what this allows you to do is really talk through things that happened in your day, your highs, your lows, your anxieties, your fears, anything basically that either helped to progress your healing or is kind of like blocking your healing. Because essentially what you wanna do is not let anything close you off from making progress. You wanna be very open with the communication so that you have somebody there that can say, what do you need from me? And they can help you move past that. They can give you reassurance. The second exercise is to switch up your daily routine. This was the most difficult one for me because when I was in therapy, I would hear, you need to switch it up, you need to do something new, you need to do things that you enjoy. And I told my therapist, I don't know how to do that because I was already doing things that made me happy. I was already spending time on me and my personal development and just my mental health. But what I learned through her, and I don't want to like, these are not her words specifically, it's just kind of like the general idea. What I learned from her is that sometimes the things that made you happy before trauma are not the things that make you happy after trauma. And that's not to say that they never will make you happy again. It's just that in short, your brain can kind of um, associate those routines, those daily routines, the things that used to make you happy, they can associate those things with the part of your life that the trauma occurred and they can actually be painful instead of what they once were, which is enjoyable. The third exercise is less of an exercise and more of a mental mind shift. And if you have ever dealt with depression or anxiety, this would be helpful for you as well because it helps with my anxiety now. And what my therapist tells me anytime I start to go too far back or too far forward of the but this happened or the what is she tells me the past is depression the future is anxiety anytime I allowed myself to think about something that happened in the past or something that caused me pain I realized that I would really keep going down that path so once I thought of the one thing it would kind of like lead me on this path of thinking about the other things that led up to that event or whatever. So living in the past was making me feel sad, was making me feel depressed. Anytime I started to think like, well, what if this doesn't happen? Or what if this person starts doing this? Or what if this hurts this person? 
then I started to feel anxiety. So bottom line, you want to focus on the right now, focus on the present. What can I do right now? How can I work on clearing this like thought process out of my brain? What can this person do for me right now? What can my support system do for me right now? The past is depression. The future is anxiety. The fourth exercise is such an important one, but it's also such a simple one, and that is to ask for what you want. Now, again, it sounds so simple, but through this whole process, I have learned that I'm a little bit codependent, and I already knew that I was empathetic, that I felt people's energy, but I learned that when I wanted something, I wouldn't speak up about it because I was more concerned about other people's feelings than I was my own. So now, as simple as it sounds, I am very direct about what I want. And that doesn't mean that I am rude or I am insensitive. But if something is important to me, I will not beat around the bush. So ask for what you want. Be direct and don't think that being passive aggressive is actually going to get you what you want. The fifth exercise is an exercise to help you interrupt negative thoughts. When my therapist first told me about this, I thought to myself, there is no way I'm going to interrupt these thoughts. I want to feel this. I want to be able to really determine why I'm feeling this and get to the bottom of it. But what I quickly realized was that triggers could happen anywhere in a day. And it was not always appropriate to live in those moments. And in fact, it sometimes ruined my entire day or my entire week. What my therapist taught me was the square method. So essentially what you are doing is picturing a square in your mind. You are breathing in for the one side of the square, you're breathing out for another side, in for the next side, and out for the next side. And while you are doing that, you're closing your eyes, you're visualizing the, the square, you're breathing. And the reason this is so impactful is because the brain cannot physically focus on two things at once. So if you are focusing in on the square, what it looks like, the breathing, your brain cannot continue to think about this negative association. So this is something that I do now more than I did in the beginning, but it's something that has been so crucial for my recovery. And the sixth and final exercise is to fill your own cup. So as I mentioned before, I was doing things that were making me happy. You know, I was taking my baths and listening to my podcast. And I always found ways to convince myself that I was doing for me, that I was taking the time to learn for me. But I actually was putting off things that I wanted to do. So for example, my entire life, I don't remember a time in life where I didn't want to volunteer at a, an, an animal shelter, um, but I just kept telling myself, I'll do it when the kids are a little bit older or I don't have time for that. At the end of the day, I was making a lot of excuses because of time and because of money. And what I ended up realizing was that it was time to make me a priority no matter what that cost. And I still put my family first, obviously, I'm not going to put myself in a bad situation, but essentially I stopped making excuses for myself. Healing can be very difficult, it can be very exhausting at times, but I'm putting in the work now because I don't want this stuff to creep back up on me later. So if you are someone who is going through a tough time, I really, really recommend getting in to see a therapist or using the Headspace app, which I don't use, but I've heard really great things. If you cannot make that happen, then I just really, really encourage you to do a lot of personal development, to really dig deep and find what makes you happy and to put you first. And I hope that these six exercises help you in that process. So I hope this helps. Let me know if you would like to see more of these kind of like therapy in session videos. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.